Okay, so in this video, I have here a pretty common clarinet. It's a little older, but it's one of the like upper beginner sort of general intermediate clarinets. Uh, a lot of adult amateurs use this brand. And while this model is not produced anymore, it's still very common. So um, this is the Yamaha 32. It is wood and in really good shape because I just fixed it. Um, with all new pads and everything. So it plays great just the way it should. Um, all the mechanisms are in order and all that. So it comes with a standard barrel. This one is actually... Uh, maybe it's not a great example to use because um, this one is a replacement barrel. Um, as far as clarinets go, they have a lot of parts and pieces that can be customized to fit your needs as a player. You can change out the barrel. That's probably the most common. You'll see stuff like the Coon barrel. This one's pretty standard. I got it. Um, for a pretty good price on eBay because it has been previously repaired but I liked it because it's a half size so you can measure your the length of your barrel from the top to the bottom um, and you can say oh this one is 65 and a half millimeters um, so they usually come with millimeter sizes on them uh, the standard sizes that are included with most instruments are either a 65 or a 66 in most cases for B-plot clarinet. Um, some of the fun ones are um, like they have a really pretty one that Buffet puts out nowadays. It's called the Icon model. Um, this one is on the back. It says Icon and 66. So, um, there's that as well. And then, um, there's also, you can get different mouthpieces. Like this one, I haven't cleaned it up all the way. It used to have a mouth mouthpiece patch on it, but I wanted to change it out because it was old and gross. Um, so you do that once in a while. You can... Play with a mouthpiece patch. I definitely recommend playing with something on your mouthpiece. This one has a clear, really thin, kind of rubbery mouthpiece patch, and it just it's like a sticker you put on. So, uh, but this is a mouthpiece I've had since I was in high school. Uh, the writing has kind of worn off the front, but it's a Van Doren 5RV Lyre. Um, and so often the mouthpiece information is either down on the side. You can kind of see the little mark there. That's the liar mark. Um, so there's information on the back usually, the maker's name, sometimes the model name down like in this area. Or sometimes they put it like the information on opposite sides there. So there's all sorts of different mouthpieces you get. Um, there's all sorts of different ligatures that you can get. I have a few that I kind of rotate through. Um, this one I had is a Rovner ligature. I had it has a nice single single screw there, which is much easier to navigate than the sort of standard little doohickeys that come with your instrument most of the time. Those are great to start on, but yeah. Um, my favorite one these days is actually one like this that is actually 3D printed. There's a little marker on the, the side. It's a fancy P and there's one on the other side as well. Fancy P. Uh, and it stands for Pereira 3D. These are 3D printed. It's out of made out of a flexi sort of plastic material. And it's a really cool design. 
um, and I just actually bought another one for myself to fit my E-flat clarinet. They come in many different colors, actually. You can get the boring, you know, black or white, but you can also pick fluorescent green, fluorescent yellow, pretty blue. Hey, look, it matches my shirt. <laughs> um, there's also, in the realm of accessories, there's also um, bells. So you can change out your standard bell. Did you believe that? Wow. Um, so one of my favorites is actually this one by Bakun again. And you notice it's red colored wood instead of the usual black. This is a Cocobolo. So another exotic wood. Um, and it also has a fun feature inside. It's kind of hard to see in there. You can kind of see it there. So there's the lip where your instrument sits. And then below that, there's another ring cut into the wood. And that's called a voicing groove. It's supposed to help you um, with your articulation, especially as you go over the break um, with your clarinet. So those are fun. Um, back to barrels. There's also a uh, nice, slightly more affordable, usually, 3D printed options. This is the basic one, another from Pereira. So you see their logo, the fancy P. Um, and this one is a standard 65 millimeter. And this one you can see there's a lot of layer lines and everything, but it's pretty standard inside. Very nice, easy blowing, really inexpensive option to play around with different materials or whatever that you're experimenting with. Um, Here's another option from Pereira. This one is called their Bold Barrel. It's a little bit reminiscent of the Bakun. Their Bakun has a MOBA barrel that I really like. Um, and I really especially like their um, MOBA barrel in the Cocobola wood. So again, the sort of reddish wood and sometimes the cocobolo is redder than others this is a kind of a darker cocobolo um i had one before that was it was almost orange it was really bright um and so the weird thing with wood is that sometimes the wood will suit different um instruments better than others so that's why anytime you buy an instrument or a new accessory unless you absolutely know exactly what you want and even then try and be able to play it first um so the other ligature i have i forgot to show before is this one it's rose gold plated and um and it when i play with this one it makes the clarinet sound completely different sometimes um so that one, i kind of call it it's kind of more like the soloist sort of feel it feels like you're standing out a lot more like this really 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 obvious that you're playing um so with this one you kind of blend a little bit more. It's really good at like ensemble sort of ligature. Um, and then this one is sort of like middle of the road. You could do so many things with it. Uh, it's very, very versatile. That's why I like it. Uh, and it's not very expensive. And also if you drop it, it doesn't go out of shape easily. Unlike these guys or even this one. So, um, yeah. Let's see. Do I have anything else? Oh, yeah. So, the other fun thing we're doing um, as a project, my husband and I 
have been collaborating together. He does 3D printing and designing. So um, I've been asking him to come up with things for my little E-flat clarinet. This guy came without a barrel or a bell. So just the body. So, and I had to fix this one too. I set it up with, um, you can see in there, different kinds of pads. Another thing you can do to customize your clarinet, different kinds of pads play completely differently. Um, so this one has a mixture of pads, which is what a lot of pros do. They put on um, a lot of people really enjoy the leather pads, premium leather if you can get it, on the bottom, at least the bottom four keys for a B flat or an A clarinet. Um, the E flat here has the bottom four keys, which are, you know, these two and these two. Um, so the, the keys operated by these, which are the lowest tonals on the clarinet, those ones have leather, but also, uh, this one and this one and this one because they are linked together there. So this has, um, so these are all the leather pads. And then the top pads, you can see in there, there's pads. And this one, it's kind of weird because the video is backwards. Um, this one is different. Can I see it? It's cork. Um, so these other pads are all, uh, they're called Valentino is the maker, Valentino Masters type pads. And all the pads on this clarinet, except for the register cork, um, are all black. So it's kind of cool. Um, you can hardly tell that they're there. They kind of blend right in to the body of the clarinet. So, kind of makes it a little bit more sleek. Versus, this one has sort of standard setup of the bladder pads. And you can see like they are a whitish color. Kind of more like an off-white, kind of a creamy, creamy white. There's one. So they kind of stand out, you know, a little bit like white wall tires, kind of, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Anyway, so if you customize your clarinet, let's play a little bit. Um, you can also play with a tuner and discover like your barrel length. They call these like a tuning barrel. Um, they have different lengths. Like I mentioned before, this one is a 66 and a half versus this one is a 66. And they also make some in different lengths for like your A clarinet, if you have a clarinet in C. If you have an E flat clarinet, um, there it is. Like this guy, this is for the E flat clarinet. We 3D printed it in 42 and a half millimeters. So they're quite different. This one is also slightly different design, so a little bit different shape. And this one is a 42 and a half as well. So huh, that's kind of cool there. Um, and this one and this one are both 66 millimeters. So um, the other thing that can also control your tuning is your mouthpiece. Different mouthpieces have different shapes. So like the openings on them are different. The cut of like all the stuff inside the little chamber areas 
are all different on different makes and models of um, mouthpieces. So here's another one, different mouthpiece. Different maker as well. You can see the different logo on the there, and then the information about the model number is there. Um, and so you could see it's also got a different shape and everything. Slightly different. You see, there are also different lengths. So um and then the insides are both also Whee! okay wow it's hard <laughs> so all the things matter with that okay so this is getting long so i'll play real quick and let you decide okay where was that? I'm sorry, I've been putting everything on my stand and obscuring my music. So, there we go. Switch out the barrel. Now this one's probably, I didn't actually measure the other barrel, the stock barrel, but um, I'll let you hear if it sounds different. this guy out. this guy again. Of different options. Oh, forgot to change out the bell. Let's see how this does, huh? And it doesn't fit. So 
um, when you order a new bell, there are different options or you can measure actually the diameter of your tenon here as well as the depth. Oh, what else? Oh, and the inside measurement of the bore. So that's how we find out like um, the bells for this E flat clarinet are a different size. So the different options that we've been making um, have been, this was the, the first real test one that actually looked decent and uh, so for a little while my clarinet had um, this color green barrel and bell with uh, this one so yeah so it kind of looked like it was silk because it's kind of shiny and um, this one kind of looks a little bit like fabric because it has kind of little slubs um, to try that out. So anyway, it's been a lot of fun. Um, here's another test print in gray. This one is a rapid test print. So you could really see the layer lines in that one. And, uh, but... So anyway, it's been a lot of fun with that. A lot of fun trying out new clarinets and clarinet accessories, different reeds. Um, some of the reeds I've tried, I've tried, you know, I've got a couple of student ones, the Rico Royal in a two and a half. Um, those are the ones you start on, you know. I've got a partial box that I found for pretty cheap of the Pandoran 56 Ruda Peak. Um, those are fun because they're individually wrapped. So you know you're getting a super fresh read. Um, those are three and a half. I have fours. I've got like four and a half. Um, it also depends on the cut of your mouthpiece openings and all of that for read strength. So there's a lot of different things you can do to play with your sound, to play with your setup, uh, et cetera. So um, sometimes when I've been selling the clarinets, um, they like, um, I sold one that had a different bell paired with it, as well as the original. Um, so I had found Another one of these guys, that orange one that I mentioned, um, played really, really well with a Buffet um, E11 clarinet. Um, really deepened the sound, gave it a little more of the, the depth and the sound that advanced students or professionals look for uh, without breaking the bank. So, um, and I've got another clarinet here. It's an old uh, vintage Selmer Paris, which are great instruments, by the way. Very, very, very well made. Um, and with this, it comes with, you know, the stock barrel. But I also found that this guy, which is another one of the Pereira bold barrels, um, this one played really, really, really nicely with that instrument. So it's included in the sale. Um, so the difference between, you know, this logo of Selmer versus the one that's in blocky letters straight across. This is Selmer Paris. The other one is Selmer USA. They are completely different. So. Uh, Selmer Paris is more of a pro lime or high end uh, intermediate, um, but mostly a lot of pros still use them uh, in classical as well as jazz and definitely in band music. So here's the 
body of that instrument and uh, look for that video next. I will, this guy is also for sale on eBay and Reverb. So um, if you see it, it's definitely cross-posted, clarinet groups on Facebook and all that. So uh, it's a beautiful instrument. I think it was not played very much actually, which is the best kind. So, all right. Well, thanks for joining me. If you have questions, uh, shoot me a message. Uh, look for me on Facebook. You can find me at, um, it's like facebook.com slash woodwinds are life. So woodwinds are life. Yeah, real fun. Okay, thank you. Bye.